Republicans don't care how dumb Herschel Walker is. They don't care. They want power. They will vote for an idiot as long as there's an R in front of his name. Uh, Nola, you first. Yeah. Um, oh, so much to digest here. <laughs> as a Southerner, you know, um, I am very proud of that fact. And then sometimes I am just heartbroken. And, you know, I, I've thought a lot about this, you know, thinking about the way that Herschel Walker is being kind of brought out and and just um, performing, you know, this performative aspect of what he's doing is kind of heartbreaking in a way. You know, it's really, really sad to watch um, because, you know, I grew up thinking, you know, this man, this man is a legend. And it it's baffling to me that so many people, you know, in the Republican space are willing to go out and just completely sully their legacies, you know, and that's the part that's just mind blowing to me. I, you know, I make absolutely no judgments on, you know, a person's cognitive ability. He may be suffering from some football related injuries. But at the end of the day, this this black man who was is a legend in his own right is shuff, is is shuffling and dancing literally um, mm -hmm. on stage, entertaining these people, you know, and we can all kind of visibly see that he's probably not up for the job of being a senator, you know, where. And this other element of, you know, the Christians in Georgia aligning with him, I should I should be specific and say more white Christians, when you literally have a reverend, you literally have a reverend running, um, you know, an incumbent in this position. So, again, you know, it's really not about um, anything other than race. You know, and let's just put it out there. You have one particular type of black man that's running that it's very obvious that people want to control him. And that's the part of it that makes it the, the most sad. That part is so salient and so obvious that it makes you wonder, what did they promise this man? I, I really I really want to know that. Like, what did they promise this man for him to really just be um, this open to being controlled this way? Because it absolutely makes no sense. So in one regard, you have a person who is clearly going to be controlled by other people. And then on the other hand, you have someone who is very capable, you know, who is an actual reverend. And I love his ads, Roland. I love the ad that you're playing um, with him and the dog. I mean, it's shade. It's it's light shade, but I like it. Um, so it's a very interesting situation here. You know, put two black people up against each other and the black people won't know the difference type of thing. That really irritates me. Like, like you have no idea how much, you know, it's pandering and it's actually very demeaning to the black community in Georgia. I mean, I, I know what they're doing. This is power. They don't care. I mean, Ron Johnson, I mean, this fool in Wisconsin, uh, you know, uh, converting with uh, with the Russians. I mean, he's complete. He lies. He's flipped. They don't care. This is what I keep trying to explain to Democrats and progressives. When you are running against people who do not have any morals or values or principles or ethics or character that only care about power you better respond accordingly. Thanks. Renita? Yeah, Herschel Walker not being a member of Mensa um, is not a bug. That's a feature for the Republicans. As I tell folks all the time, you would be surprised at how many representatives, and this is on both sides of the aisle, um, both Democrats and Republicans don't actually read the bills that they vote on. They just sort of wait to be told how to vote and what to say um, by the caucus. That's not how I operate as a representative. Um, but unfortunately, that is what a lot of folks do. And so Herschel Walker not running on being scholarly or somebody who is overly concerned with policy is is fantastic for Republicans, because what that means is, to your point, Roland, if he gets in, it is 100 percent total power. He's not going to be looking into the things that he's supporting and they will 100 percent be able to control him and he won't know any better. And so that, you know, Republicans really have sort of, um, you know, they, they put him up for one reason and one reason only. And that is because they feel like this is the best way that they can have a shot at getting this seat. And we have heard locally here in Georgia where Republicans from the very beginning were saying, OK, we already know that Warnock is going to be the Democrats uh, candidate because obviously he's the incumbent. We need a black person, too. We need a black man. We need a black for a black. That is what they were saying. So that's why he's there. And for Herschel, it's all upside for him, too, because we treat, you know, U.S. senators particularly 
like rock stars. So, I mean, it, it's absolutely real that Herschel can win in Georgia. Um, people have to take things very, very seriously. We had depressed turnout for the November 8th election with almost 5% of black voters not showing up from 2018. So we really have got to make sure that everybody understands what is on the line. And I do think that uh, the Warnock campaign has to expressly talk to black voters about why it's important to show up and what he'll do for black voters. Uh, the, th the thing here, uh, um, Congo, again, I, I keep telling people, this is like a this is like a football game. I don't give a damn if if if, if you're favored. Uh, again, a lot of people were like, "Oh my goodness, uh, Tennessee is gonna dog walk South South Carolina." Oh, Tennessee, South Carolina has no shot. South Carolina put up sixty three on Tennessee on Saturday. Okay, yep. uh, I, I'm still pained to see the video of North Carolina State beating the University of Houston uh, in the NCAA uh, finals in 1983. Cougars were huge favorites. They lost. So bottom line is, y'all, whoever gets the most votes, gets wins. The most votes. And folk need to understand that. Yeah, period, bottom line. And we have to understand also that the Republicans would do anything po possible. And like I said, they always got something else that they're scheming on. Last week we talked about, we don't know if, if Manchin or Cinema will convert and become Republicans. So if they get Walker in, then next thing you know, they're in control. So they always got something else up their sleeves. And when I look at Herschel Walker, I'm just thinking about what Malcolm X said. You know, whenever a black man says something that white people don't like, the first thing they do is get another black person to try to offset what they said. And this is the space that Herschel Walker occupies right now. So sticking with your sports analogy, we got to run it. We got to run the score up in every single way, shape, or form. We got to get out there and not take this for granted. Because if we didn't take this for granted the first time, Warnock should have won on November 8th. Because, you know, clearly a lot of the people who voted for Kemp were not voting for, for Walker. And now people are saying we just got to go and get him in there because we need that puppet. And we're looking at a guy who just has, forget the, the intelligence, we already established that, doesn't even have the character. You're talking about a man who takes a woman to go get an abortion, doesn't even go into the clinic, sits in the car, puts a gun to his wife's head. I mean, the list goes on and on. And the fact that these so-called white evangelicals are, are siding with him shows that they, they are at best cafeteria Christians. So every single day, because they're picking and choosing whatever values work for them to help them get power. So every single day, we got to push this hard. And like you said, Roland, we got to support the local organizations on the ground, whether it's phone calls, financially, we got to do it because they're putting in the work and we got to support them because the country is still at stake and we can't get comfortable just because we currently have a, 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 a slight majority in the Senate. All right, folks, back to that Roland Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Don't wait till November 8th. We can vote today. Your early vote started this week. We're on Savannah State University's campus. We will be dorm storming today, giving our treats for everyone. We hope to see everyone at the polls when it comes to November. If you believe we got power, let them know. Make some noise. Put a fist up. I need to see a fist in the air because we got power. Come on, you put it up. Come get your shirt. We're out here in the streets of Savannah, Georgia. James, do not forget to go vote. I got you. If we vote, the right people in. We can make a change. We can get these resources in our community. I am a woman, and it is important that we have the say-so of what we want to do with our bodies. We are concentrating on entrepreneurism, providing young people with resources and training that they need in order to change their trajectories. We won't black down. Democracy is on the ballot. Voting rights is on the ballot. Voting suppression is on the ballot. I am most passionate about those three combined because they all impact each other. Savannah is my home. I care about my community, and I care about representation in my community. Our voices are still going to be heard no matter what kind of obstacles try to come up against us to stop us from voting. We're still going to be standing our ground. the effort that's being made to keep our communities from voting. So that makes me realize it's even more important because if it wasn't important, they wouldn't be fighting to make sure we could vote. This doesn't stop this year. This is a forever movement. 
we're going to exert our power as a people. Walk in our rightful place. We're going to change our communities, fight for our communities, and build our communities. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches! A real uh, revolutionary right now. Black Power! We support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. Hey, Black. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black Owned Media and something like CNN. You can't be Black Owned Media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?